So we've got our polyplane, and we're going to talk a little bit about tiling in ZBrush really quickly. And an easy way to do tiling is micro mesh replacing, replacement or nano mesh. Uh, if you've watched my videos on making uh, stockings on YouTube, you'll already have a pretty good idea of how to do this in just general nano mesh um, knowledge here. If we go to make poly mesh 3D, I'm going to go to geometry here, and since it is a polymesh 3D, it's not initialized. I could go into the initialize options before I make it a polymesh 3D and lessen the number of vertical and horizontal um, lines here. But what I'm going to do instead is just hit reconstruct, and we're just going to kind of simplify this uh, plane down a little bit. Um, we'll do something like this. Delete higher, delete lower, and now we have just a divided plane. Now what I want to do is knurling is basically when you're working out or when you grab a metal thing and it's got all the little, like that just rough grip that's on a surface, so you can really grab onto it. Um, that's what we're going to be making is just a tiling texture version of that one. So in order to do that, let's go ahead and, um, you know what, we'll go ahead and name this plane, uh, just so we don't get confused because we're going to have a lot of planes over here. We'll go to rename and we'll call this tiling plane. And then I'm also, I'm going to hit clone and I'm going to work on a clone here, and instead of tiling plane one, I'm going to rename this pyramid. And with pyramid here, I'm going to hit reconstruct uh, a couple times until I just have a basic uh, polygon with two individual uh, slices in it. I'm going to hit delete higher. And now I'm just going to hold down control and drag over that middle point here and control tap to invert that. I'm just going to pull that out with transpose. And then I'm going to go into Z modeler BZM and I'm going to do a bridge two points here and we're just going to kind of bridge this. We're just going to make a really quick pyramid here. And this is purely for height information. It doesn't need to be beautiful. It's okay if it's triangulated. Oh, my phone's blowing up. Turn my sound off here. We just have a, a pyramid right here. So I'm going to have this mesh, which is our pyramid, and then I've got our tiling plane here. So I want to put that pyramid on this tiling plane. So if I go to my Z modeler brush here, space bar, and I'm going a little bit fast because I did do this on the other channel, but you know, again, I want to have this archived as well on mine, so it's easily organized. And I can always point people to it really quickly. Um, Q mesh. Uh, if we do all polygons, and we want, we don't want to do Q mesh, we want to do insert nano mesh all polygons. If we do that, we can drag out uh, our basically is the default shape, which is a cube here. I'm going to hit M, is in Mike Pavlovich, and I'm going to grab my pyramid. And now we can just drag that out. We're going to go into our nano mesh options. And it's going to be really easy for us because it's just the squares on squares. Um, so you don't even have to worry about aligning the edges or anything like that. So we can just go in here to the uh, Z rotation, type in zero. Um, we're going to hit, we're going to make it fit so that all of these pyramids fit right into each one. And we want to change the size to one so it fits them all perfectly. And there's our knurling pattern. Now the problem is um, knurling. I hope that's the right word. I'm going to feel really stupid if that's the wrong word. Um, <laughs> hey, Squad Ape, thanks for showing up. Um, is basically, we're going to have to offset every other row of this thing. So let's go ahead and, uh, I mean, we don't have to undo that. We can just make new polygroups. But uh, easy way to make new polygroups here is use your Z modeler brush, hover over an edge, do polygroup, poly loop. And then as you, if you tap and hold and then tap alt, you can just cycle through polygroups here. So we'll just go ahead and mark these as separate polygroups here. So we'll take this and then again, hover over face, insert nano mesh. Instead of all polygons, go to polygroup all, drag it out and then go over here. And again, we're gonna do fit size of one so it fits perfectly and then rotate, Z rotation of zero and there we go. Beautiful. So now uh, what we're gonna do now is drag out another pyramid. Now we instead of getting all of those options, we're gonna go to index zero right here. I'm going to copy, go back to index one, paste, and now they're perfectly aligned. Let's go ahead and turn on a different material here. So now I got our pyramids all lined up. Now for index one, I'm gonna go to, let me see, is it X offset? No. Oh, you know what? We do need to align. Um, I mean, we could just go over here to alignment and say align to normal, I believe. And let's see if that'll do it. I do wanna talk about that though. There we go. So do align to normal. And um, now we can just go, so Y offset, X offset, we'll do negative, we'll do one. There we go. So now they're offset perfectly uh, in one direction. Now we need to capture this. So what we're gonna do is go out of edit mode, hit control N to clear our canvas, go up here to document and turn off proportional because we're gonna make this square. So 1024 by 1024, hit enter, hit resize. 
Here's our document. Now we want to make sure we see the whole thing. If you made a 4K document, it would go way outside your um, computer here. So you're going to take the zoom here and just pull up. Just click and pull that zoom. And now you can see the entire border. Now, uh, if you wanted to capture it 2048 or whatever, that's certainly something you could do. Now you're going to want to drag this back out, go into edit mode. And part of the problem is if we turn off nano mesh and we hit F, it'll go ahead and frame um, and ignore that. That's just a GPU glitch. Um, it'll frame exactly the square to the square of your document because they're both square. Um, the problem is if we turn down on mesh on, you're going to see, oh crap, we have a blank space over here. So basically what we need is padding. So I'm going to go over here. I'm just going to grab these middle sections here. And I'm going to hit F to frame that middle section and then control shift tap to bring it back. Because basically what we're doing is we're showing this, we're framing it, and then we're control shift tapping to bring everything back. So by doing that, F to frame, control shift tap to bring it all back, turn nano mesh back on, and now we have a perfect tiling um, height in our document here. So now all we have to do is simply go over here to alpha, grab doc, grabbed our perfect tiling height. If we want to make sure it's tiling, what we can do is go out of edit mode, and then the tilde key, um, which is above your tab key next to the one and underneath your escape on most keyboards, at least my laptop and my little baby one, my little baby keyboard. Um, you can tilde drag and that'll actually make a tiling document. So you can just arbitrarily drag this thing around and then do a texture or an alpha grab doc and it'll still be tiling. Um, so now that we have that, we can now export this onto our desktop here as Nerling, hey Malkior, and uh, 3D printed, thanks for showing up, and uh, Escalabo, everybody. Uh, so now we've got that uh, alpha saved out. And now we can use that in ZBrush. We can use that in Painter, um, all sorts of good stuff. So let's go back to our plane here. I want to talk about a few more things here. So if I go over here to my nano mesh and we go, if I want to get rid of these, just go to an inventory and do delete all. And now we're just back to our regular plane here. Um, if I want to redo my document, just go to document, turn on W size to take up the whole width of the open space here and hit new and then drag out your plane. Okay, so we have this plane here. Now, if we didn't have something square, like if we went to um, hover over face and do insert nano mesh, all polygons, hit M as in mic pav, and choose a cylinder. When I drag that out, you see how they're kind of pointing all over the place, like this one's going this way, this one's going this way. If you do align to normal, sometimes that'll fix the problem. Um, also what you can do, and this was brought up a couple um, sessions ago by one of the uh, people that showed up here. If we go to geometry, modify topology, you're going to see there is a align edge. Just click that and that'll force all of your edges to point in the same direction. So also very useful, super useful for uh, micro mesh replacement because you can't really, you'd, you'd have to do a lot of spin edges with ZModeler and stuff to get that to work right. Um, but in here, you can usually align to normal. If you're having problems with that, that's another good option to use. Cool. Oh, and so speaking of that, as far as like tiling stuff, um, 2.5D, I don't do it a lot, but a ton of environment artists that I work with do, do a lot of that stuff. But basically, um, in fact, you know what? Let's, let's, um, Ah, uh, you know, that's not, even, that's not worth it. We'll, we'll do it simple. I'm going to go over here to a cube 3D, make it a poly mesh, and then we'll kind of stretch this thing out. There we go. Stretch this thing out here. And really quick, we'll turn off project, turn off blur, dynamesh this thing. And I'm going to go in here with my uh, trim dynamic preferences edit. I like our service. Um, and maybe we'll go over some rock sculpting today. It's been a while. Let's, in fact, let's go grab our brush mallet let's grab a fast mallet and we'll just go in here and wrap up let's chew this thing up all sides here okay so here is a little brick type item so now if you wanted to do a tiling document here with an arbitrary mesh you can go to documents go to uh, turn off proportional again we'll do a 1024 or 1024 and we'll go to resize here and we will, oops, 
There we go. Sorry about that. Uh, so we can drag our brick out here. If we want to do a tiling document of bricks, one thing you can do is you can go out of edit mode. And now as soon as you do that, hit W and you'll get a little widget here. And you'll be able to, to kind of move this thing around and you can hit E and rotate and scale this thing. And there's also Projection Master I don't go into a lot anymore. Um, 2.5D stuff I don't go into a lot anymore. I think if I hold down Control, Shift, or is it Shift, or is it S? Shift S, okay, yeah, so Shift S will save a screen just like any other tool in ZBrush. And then you can just drag out copies of this. And you could also bring in other stuff, and we'll do that again. Now, just like in Photoshop, you wanna stay away from the edges because what we're gonna do is basically um, go back into draw mode here and then hold down the tilde key and just tilde drag. And then you can fill in these spaces with anything else. I mean, you can also drag in, like I said, any arbitrary mesh as long as you stay away from, and you can just uh, go into edit mode so that it's an actual object, hit shift S to save a screenshot. And then you can go in here and it just use your rotations and all that good stuff to kind of Move a move, just move an object around like that, and then when you're done, just go out of edit mode, hit the tilde key, and now you have a tiling document that you can grab and alpha and all that good stuff. Um, yeah, uh, that's a good question, um, Malkior. So the standard brush, if you're working 2.5D, and that's the um, the standard brush, and this one, the simple brush, right? You can go and you can do 2.5D painting so you can kind of just use the document as a painting tool and this is how zbrush started was all of these 2.5d type things it wasn't until i want to say how oh, is it ringling 2003 is when they started getting to 3d i think don't quote me on that um so you're actually, you do have height information. So you can go in here and you can brush height information. And just like anything else, you can go to stroke. You can do a line stroke with your 2.5D meshes here. You can even go into the stroke menu and go to um, the modifiers and do the spacing. So if you crank that spacing up, it'll be really far out. So in my old DVDs, I go into a lot of this kind of thing in Projection Master. Um, I don't really do it anymore, but uh, that's kind of where the 2.5D stuff comes in. Um, yes, and that's uh, something I brought up in the PixLogic um, was the Joseph Drust tile. Uh, it'll the the Nano Tile plugin. It'll do tiling. It also grab AO maps and normal maps and um, curvature maps and all that good stuff too. Uh, but that that's just kind of an easy breakdown that anybody can do. So if you wanted to apply what you made, your knurling texture, which you have right here. What you could do is a couple different ways. Let's go to documents, uh, with W size new document. No. And on the PixLogic live stream I did, I did a whole uh, thing, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna keep this one nice and easy here. So if we grab it, uh, cause we're gonna go into painter real quick and do kind of the same thing. So we've got our cylinder here and we're gonna make a poly mesh 3D. Now, if we wanna see what these UVs look like on this thing, what we need to do is go over here to our uh, texture map, create new from UV check. I mean, you could do UV check, you could do new from UV map, and then I'll kind of show you the UVs. That looks kind of weird. Let's do, turn texture off. Let's go to Z plugin here. We're gonna go to UV master. I'm gonna hit work on clone. And let's hit flatten and see. Okay, so that's the UVs, and they're not bad. Um, if we unflatten, what we can do is we can do, let's just do a really quick, and under your polygroup menu, you'll have a group by normals. Let's do a group by normals. You get two polygroups here. And then we can do turn on polygroups. It's symmetrical, sure. We'll hit unwrap, and then we'll hit flatten. And now we've got our UVs here. So now we can, now these are really just polygons on a plane. So what you can do is go into W, and we'll go into our brush options here and we can do auto masking, mask by polygroups up to 100. And then you, you know, just like anything else with polygons, you can go through here and just click on any polygroup and it'll move around. You can control click any one of them and it'll mask it out for you. Um, you can scale these things down if you want. So if you don't want the caps that much resolution, you can just kind of move them around and you can mask them all, turn mask by polygroups down to zero and then just move things together like that. Um, if you wanted to straighten these things out, you could go to your, we did this too, 
uh, masking by border and then we can just mask these bottom ones out and then invert that mask there we go and then we can just go through ah, actually clips not gonna work that well is it let's go ahead and just mask everything but here so we can use either use the clip brush to kind of clip these to a straight line or you can also go through here and use your transpose to kind of just ease them into a straight line here and then once you have everything in a straight line you can just mask by border and then you can go to your deformation menu because again it's just polygons here and then you can just polish or relax all of these back into shape so anyway that's our UVs let's say we like them we'll go ahead and do unflatten copy UVs and then we'll go back to our cylinder here we'll go to paste UVs and now let's check them out Texture map, new from UV check, looks pretty good. Um, great, so turn texture off. And now we can apply knurling to this object here. So we're gonna go over here to our doo -doo 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 surface. We're gonna surface noise. And you know, the, you know, we've already gone over the basics of surface noise, which is basically taking your strength and cranking it up and then changing your noise scale. Then you can kind of play around with this line and get some really cool effects of like, you know, kind of rocky effects. And there's a lot of other things with color and stuff you can do. Um, however, if we want to bring in our own alpha, or if you want to go into noise plug and see if they have a knurling, which I didn't even think about checking. Um, do they have like a brick? Maybe they do in here. Let's try brick. Hit OK. Um, so we do that. Now we have a plug-in scale. So now we're using the noise plug-in. Um, We'll go ahead and change that strength. Now we're getting rock with the brick. We don't really like that. So what I'm gonna do is take the mix basic noise down to zero. And now we just have a uh, brick. So now we can scale down the plugin scale here. Let's see, noise scale, plugin scale, strength. Oh, <laughs> let me reset my curve here. That would, that would help. <clears throat> So now we can kind of see, there we go. So there's our bricks. Um, and now if we go back into edit here, we can kind of see they're offset, but then you got to play around with these widths. I'm not going to bother. It's too much for me to deal with, but that's maybe one option. Uh, I'm going to go in here to alpha. We're going to grab our knurling. And then now that we have that, we don't need our plugin scale anymore because we have our noise scale. We're going to turn off noise plug. And now we just have noise scale on here. So if I go to, uh, now it is 3D, so it's just using a 3D projection. So it's gonna basically do a planar projection onto a face. And then as soon as it hits the sides, it's just gonna stretch all the way back. So I'm gonna turn on UV, that's gonna use our UVs. And you're gonna see the top and the bottom are much smaller UVs. So they're gonna be a little bit weird. We're gonna take our noise scale, uh, I'm sorry, our alpha scale and turn that down. And now we have our knurling applied. We can change our strength over here up and down let's take it negative and I think if we turn off relative there we go turn off rel and that'll allow you to kind of get not have to over crank the strength that much so we've got noise here it's knurling and go ahead and hit OK and now this is just a displacement so we can turn it on and off and we have it on we can move this thing around and it just kind of follows because it's really just a displacement map um, attached to our object now if we want to apply this to our object we're gonna need uh, subdivisions to do that. If we do it now, apply to mesh, it's just gonna look bumpy. So we gotta go over here to geometry. Uh, let's go ahead and turn the smooth modifier on. I'm gonna do a quick crease by polygroup here. Uh, or actually, I don't think we had this one polygroup. Let's do crease at a tolerance of like 42. Uh, hit control D a bunch of times. And now if we go down here to surface, apply to mesh, that'll go ahead and bake out, not bake out, it's applying the displacement to the actual geometry. So now it's sculptable. You can go in here and kind of smooth it out or whatnot. Uh, but before we do that, an I, a good idea is to go ahead and go into layers, make a new layer here uh, before you drop it and also go into morph target and store a morph target. So now when you go over here and hey, say apply to mesh, that's going to apply my geometry. And because we had a layer, we can go in here to the layer and we can drop that down. We can actually invert it if we want to. And we can also over crank it if we wanted to be like, I wanted it to be up to, to 11. You can crank that up uh, even further. So you can kind of fine tune with your layer here. Um, I also should have mentioned before we dropped it, you can also, whenever you mask, it won't put 
your tiling stuff. So if you wanted to mask any area of the set, you could have. Uh, so if we like this amount, we can just do bake all. And we also have a morph target here. So we can go to BMO, that's the morph brush. And I'm gonna turn off RGB, turn on Z add up to 100. And now when we paint, we can actually just go through and morph this out. Or if you prefer, go over here to switch. And then you can use your morph brush to kind of morph in where you want it to. Pretty cool. 